been what 40 minutes of troubleshooting mm -hmm. your zoom video is on I know my Zoom video is on. It's, it can Your handle Zoom the video. video is on. I know my Zoom video is oh, on. Oh, wait, I can hear myself on stream. Yep, I, I hear everything. Yep. Yay! Voices. Yes, uh, I changed networks, and apparently that helped. So, Spencer, if you want to hop on video as well. I'm scared, too. Oh, oh okay. I didn't realize. I, mean, I, I will do that, but... You're afraid it's going to knock out the stream? We'll see if it can handle it. Hello, everybody. How are you? I have with me today Spencer, who I met in college. Hello. Yeah. Um. I. You know. I was so thrown by the technical difficulties. I don't even know what we're t talking about anymore. Uh, uh. I think it was. We talked about game development. Uh. But it was really anything that we can find to talk about. Is it is it working? Can people see me? Yes, people can see you right now. People see you and they hear you and they're responding in chat. There are voices that's, and faces. That's exciting. Yes. Anyways, uh, I will actually put out a tweet that it's finally functioning. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm going to retweet you and be like, We're done troubleshooting! Please come! <laughs> Oh, I can't spell trouble. I went trouble. Trouble shooting, please. Please come, wee. Okay, and then I have to drop a link. These people are lazy and they're not gonna click through to your tweet to click on Twitch thingy. But that should work. There we go. Yes. Oh, freaking Kathy with the with the adorable bee. I love it. What is this? <gasps> uwu. <laughs> it's an uwu emote. Now then, would you like to talk about... I don't know, what are you in the mood to talk about? There are many a thing that you could discuss. Uh, I don't know. Um, we could talk about how to troubleshoot network problems. <laughs> we we which... honestly could, considering we demonstrated for 40 minutes how that, how, how that happens. I wish I was better at that. It, it's the type of thing where, like... I don't know, I, I, I feel like I need... I need to learn some like tools, you know, like command line stuff or I don't know. A lot of it is routers are so opaque. It's what do you hard mean by to opaque? like uh they're not observable, which is kind of a technicalish term that like you never know like if if the router isn't working or it's not doing something right, it's really hard to figure out why and what is not specifically working. I see. Uh they're kind of just a black box. Um, ah. the prof professional networking equipment is not like that. You can, I mean, one, it just, it doesn't just stop working for no reason most of the time, but if it's, if there is an issue, usually there's like a dashboard that will tell you like, you know, this line is up here. And so there's like a here. console, like it logs the console if there are issues. Yeah. Like it'll tell you if something's sucking up all the bandwidth or if your upstream bandwidth is just gone. Now, when you say black box text, like testing or whatever that means, you just, you have no idea uh. what's going on inside. Yeah, so specifically just black box, uh, just any device or system that you don't have visibility into the internals, you know, you don't know how it works or what's going on inside. I see. So, that's so that extends to the to black box testing, you know, when you're mm -hmm. testing something that is a black box. That's interesting. Would you like to inform the audience how you ended up in computer science? Um, yeah. Uh, I originally got into game pro or game programming. I wanted to learn how to make video games. And so <laughs> someone, I think this is like, I started, started pretty early. Uh, I think it was like third grade when someone got me my first programming book. Mm -hmm. And it was like, a, it was the, the C reference manual, which oh is God. not a very good <laughs> learning book. So I started reading through it and I got to like the second example program. And this is a, a book written in like the 80s, which is intended for people who already knew C. And it was just like, <laughs> like here's the concepts that you should be familiar with. And I, I did get one of them to compile and I got the second one to compile, but it was like, you know, it, it was using the, the get char and put char API, which is not a very like obvious API. Like, yeah, it was just a, a, when you a disaster. Say get char, so, you're talking about like a character as a primitive data type. Yeah, so it's a specific API in C. It's a function. You you call this function, and it will. You're probably gonna need to slow down a little bit for the rest of the chat. <laughs> it's it's not even yeah. It's not even worth going into. Basically, it's it's just a very 
it's not like other languages where you have like a, a function that says get line and it prompts the user and it returns a string which is the line that I'm sorry we, we just slow down to like what return means what a string is like we, we have to yeah. assume that the people here do not program like you and i i think the important part is that the c reference manual is a terrible learning tool for an absolute novice. Um, that, that is the takeaway so, here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. So anyways, it wasn't until I think in seventh grade, I somehow my mom found this like uh, online summer school thing led by run by Johns Hopkins. Um, okay. And so they they sent you like lectures and like a notebook with pro like problems to go through and a tu like a tutor you could email. So I, I originally learned how to code that way and then mm -hmm. just kind of over the years started teaching myself stuff um, most of it motivated through wanting to learn game programming uh, like, I see for a while I was really interested in um, learning how graphics programming worked and so I learned OpenGL and uh, you know I would try to read like white papers on new graphics techniques and like understand 30 percent of it but through the, the you cumulative white papers about programming as a kid. Um, yeah, I mean, because if you wanted to learn, I, I, I would play a game and think, wow, like, you know, the crisis came out in like freshman year of high school for me. And that that game was really innovative because it, it pioneered a lot of uh, graphics techniques that hadn't been used. Right. Before. Let, let's let's dial it back a bit and explain what white paper is first. Sure. Um, I don't know. You might have a better explanation than I. I mean, I, I, I always think of it, and this might even be inaccurate, but I thought that a white paper was research that a company put out as a blog post, essentially, for like consumers pretty, to review. Yeah, pretty much. Um, whenever game companies did something cool, you know, they they would try to get someone sent send someone to a conference like um, SIGGRAPH or Game Developers Conference. SIGGRAPH was like a graphics, 3D uh, computer graphics focused conference. And so they would summon, send someone there to give a talk about this new graphics technique they did. And then they would also publish so, like, you know, slides. This all makes sense to me. Paper. However, I also know we're already kind of in the weeds. Do you want to start with more like a hierarchy? Not a heart. Hello, Ganza, welcome. Um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm a little flustered now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let, let's, we had you mentioning graphics and you mentioned computer or game design, right? So let's talk mm -hmm. more about like broader disciplines of like what kind of engineers work on a game. If, cause I know, have you worked on something like commercial or is it just all hobbyist stuff? No, I've never worked on a commercial game before. But um, I know you're I have... part of uh, our video game development club, right? Actually, technically I have worked on a commercial video game because I, uh, in college, worked on a, a project with a group of students, maybe 14 people, um, and we published published a game to the Xbox Live Arcade, which was a like a for indie games on the Xbox 360. And I think we made about a hundred dollars uh, at at a dollar a piece. Um, and so I think that was enough to clear the threshold to actually get Microsoft to send us money because like <laughs> there, if you didn't make enough money, they just wouldn't give it to you. So you had um, to like turn an actual profit for them to be like, okay, they're worth investing in or something like that? Yeah, I don't know exactly how it worked. I did not see any money from it. Um, it the guy the guy who paid the the fee to like get the game on the platform was the had the first claim to to any money that was made, but technically it was I guess commercial. <laughs> Still, I mean there's lessons to be learned from that. Um I'm sure you're yeah. more familiar than most people about all the different components that go into game development, such as like, you know, people who work on the engine, people who work on like particle effects, people who work on the sound side of things, people who work on, I don't know, special effects and all that stuff. What area do you, you like focusing on? Like the physics, the collision? What, like, what, what is it? What is it? Because like, I know there's like some kind of niche, right? Yeah, so I was always really interested in the the engine side. So um, I guess if you're mm -hmm. at a high the highest level, if you're gonna Ow. break up game programming, um, there's kind of two halves to it. There's the the gameplay programming, which is uh, I guess the the stuff that players would be most familiar with. Like you know, when you fire the shotgun, it shoots out four 
bullets and the bullets do this much damage and you know it has this damage type enemies of this you know like all that like sort of the the higher level concepts and model models in the game um that would be gameplay programming as opposed to right. uh engine which is kind of the the lower level so like uh, rendering of the game assets and whatnot yeah rendering um physics simulation um input like reading input you know so the mouse right so like taking getting things from the hardware and, and then making that stuff happen in the game yeah sound okay. um so like for sound for example um a gameplay programmer would say like you know when you fire the shotgun play the the shotgun noise and here's mm -hmm. the file that Right. represents the shotgun noise and then of the course. engine programmer would you know receive that their code would receive that call and it would open the file and read the bits and bytes and figure out how to you know decode that and then send that to the graphics or sorry the sound card mm -hmm. to actually make it make noise uh, sean's got a question for you um he's asking if you know how to uh create models in 3d no actually i i i mean i i can get as far as like creating like stuff out of cubes in blender uh, I mean, when i need like test art but you know no, I, I, i've made like a, an asset in like unity right like that's 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 simple enough but then yeah. to actually like figure out the collision physics and whatnot i haven't gotten that far yet <laughs> i'm still messing yeah. around with like the meshes and looking at like the what's it called uh the materials and looking at the i think you explained it once what albedo was Oh yeah, um, that that yeah, disaster of a stream. <laughs> materials, yeah, materials are interesting. Um, that was one of the things. Lighting and materials mm -hmm. were like a particular interest of mine because um, the way that game engines uh, light things and make them look realistic is mm -hmm. is very different from how you know physics in reality. You know, with you oh, know, really? photons and stuff, uh... Uh, it's it's very different from how that physical process actually works but over time game engines have been stealing or borrowing concepts uh you know concepts from physics because physicists right. have a pretty good idea of you know why things look the way that they do and actually like so then taking the math from literal physics and then using that for the engine or something yeah so if you look at like a movie um are, are we going to get into ray tracing now <laughs> So yeah, games actually are using ray tracing. Yeah, I know. More. I know Minecraft's using ray tracing now. It's been all that my brother talks about. <laughs> yeah, and so stuff like that. A few years back, the big, uh, the the big innovation in games was physically based materials, where mm -hmm. um, you would take like the equations that were or the yeah the equations that uh, model like how light reflects off of surfaces mm -hmm. and um, try to write mathematical models to sort of uh, estimate that in a way that can be quickly calculated on a graphics card. Because, um, you know, if you have like a, an, an offline rendering solution, like you, let's say your, your pics are, I mean, <laughs> and you're, you know, when for each frame of a movie that they make, they have a giant server farm that spends like hours just rendering that one frame. We, you can't do that with video games. It's, it's I see. It, it's, so they're they're completely different approaches. So the the right you know, because CGI, you know the 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 game files have to end up on someone's local machine, and if it's like lower end, then you can't have like a movie thingy doing that, right? Yeah. So of even how a game the, loads in assets, even. Think about it this way, even with the most powerful graphics card, if you're running a game at 60, I mean, now games run at like 120 frames per second on a fancy monitor, that gives you about, I think, eight milliseconds per frame to render the entire thing. Oh, Jesus. So, and, you know, on a single machine, even if it has like a big graphics card, like, you know, the latest NVIDIA RTX 3090 literally weighs seven pounds. It takes up three <laughs> what slots. The hell? Um but you know that's just not in, on the same level as a, a render farm, which is composed of hundreds of computers that will spend, you know, hours rendering a single frame. Um, as a result, they can get you know the the models that they use to render stuff are actually much closer to how light and materials work in reality because that makes so much sense. They have the budget to. They do have that. the computing power to do that too, huh? Yep. So explain to us, since it sounds like you know. How does the hardware for a graphics card work? Because when I look at one, it's just like 
a rectangle thing, you plug it into your, your motherboard and that's it, right? How does that do all the things? What does it do? So a graphics card, um, it's kind of like a, a mini computer at this point, you know, okay. it has its, it has its own Ram. Um, it mm. has its own processor. Mm. Um, and then there's, the, it has a, you know, PCI express, which is the, the port that you actually plug the graphics card into, oh. um, is a special type of connection that basically goes straight into the CPU, which allows them to talk to each other. Okay. So graphics cards are, um, you know, essentially processors and memory that um, are specialized for doing computations that are used in graphics a lot. So um, they're, they have specialized hardware for um, rasterizing, which rasterizing right. is the, the process of taking triangles and essentially putting them into, like, taking a three, 3D vert. 3D triangle data, you know, and like all 3D mm -hmm. models are made out of triangles and actually like printing that onto a, a two dimensional, like, you know, screen or something representing a screen. Right. I was about to ask why, when you look at 3D modeling software, if that's why all the meshes and stuff have the triangles, because yes. they are drawn with triangles, essentially. Yeah. So triangles <laughs> are the, basically there, there's an equation that, um, you know, given three points, that represent a triangle, there's an equation um, to calculate whether or not like per pixel, that pixel should be, it, it, basically if it, that pixel is in the triangle or outside of it. And basically okay. graphics cards for each pixel on the screen, you know, for each triangle will calculate like, is this triangle part of, the, is this pixel part of this triangle? And they do bajillions of those calculations every frame. And so as a result, they have, special this the processor has special um you know circuits that are very very fast at doing these calculations um, i see so once you understand the underlying hardware and how graphics are rendered and everything like that it kind of makes more sense why one why they're so expensive and two why the technology is what it is and you know all that stuff um, yeah, they're just, they're very specialized processors. Um, I, I actually, I guess the, the main thing that they're good at, and this actually, oh, I, you know, so the reason why graphics cards are also good at doing things like machine learning and Bitcoin uh, has to do with the, the way that they've evolved over time. Originally, gra all graphics cards did were, you know, that, that triangle to pixel conversion. Um, over time, we when we started getting textures and um, mm -hmm. like pixel shaders, which are uh, little programs that allow you to vary the color of each pixel and simulate stuff like lighting and stuff. Um, basically, what graphics cards have turned into is massive parallel processors. So mm -hmm. the way that they achieve this is not only do they have a lot of different uh, threads running on them, so you know they they can simultaneously calculate you know, they're simultaneously running probably hundreds of instructions in parallel where even the most, even the most powerful CPUs today have maybe 50 to a hundred cores, you know, GPUs have, you know, m multiple times that. Does that make sense? The, the cores bit and the, the multi-processing, you kind of lost me there. Cause like I've heard of that stuff, but I don't understand how it works necessarily. Yeah. So a, a, a core is like, is like an individual uh, instruction executor. Okay. So if you have one core, you can do one thing at a time. Gotcha. If you have two cores, you can do two things at a time. Gotcha. And so the way that CPUs run multiple programs is they actually switch between each one very fast. But if you have multiple cores, you actually can do multiple things at a time. In a So would you say then you would need multiple multiple cores if you're working in like graphics intensive work, like rendering, doing like very complex software? Uh, I mean, technically you don't because uh, the way that the software, the, the way that operating systems are written, uh, you know, they, they essentially simulate being, they can simulate being able to do multiple things at once on a single core. But in practice, yeah, the more cores you have, you know, like most, CPUs today are quad four cores, even eight cores becoming common. Um, it just allows you, it, it essentially, you know, the difference between an otherwise identical four core and eight core processor is that the eight core 
can essentially can do twice as much calculation within a fixed amount of time. So does that technically mean it's twice as fast? Um, no, because if you're only doing one thing, and a good example of this is JavaScript, JavaScript is single threaded. Um, you can't, well, so if you're only doing one thing, those two CPUs will do that one thing in the same amount of time. Now, if you're doing two things, then, well, you know, so like, if you can take that one thing and break it up into smaller chunks that can be done in parallel, then the, the eight core CPU will be faster. But this is actually a thing, um, like nowadays game engines are optimized for this type of CPU. But if you go back a decade, two decades, game engines were all single threaded, which means that even if you had multiple cores on your CPU, if you looked at the, the, the task manager, there would be one thread that was at 100% and then all the other ones would just be idle because it was only, it wasn't written in a way to like distribute the load. Does that make sense? That kind of makes sense. And now I'm curious, how did you stumble upon all of this knowledge? Was it just years and years of Googling things? I mean, pretty much, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm a very self, I, I, I'm, I'm very good at like going down taking, rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, going down rabbit holes, like finding something that I want to learn more about it and just banging my head against Google until I find something that explains it in a way that makes sense to me. Yeah, I've done that before too. <laughs> so. uh, which I guess we might as well go into your time at Google. <laughs> yes, and that eventually landed me a Well, I, I did have a job before I, I made it to Google, but. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, like, programming was a hobby for me, uh, and it, I guess as I did more and more professional work, it became less and less of a hobby and more just, you know, something that I did. I actually do have a hobby project right now, but, um, Would you like to yeah, talk it, about that hobby project first? Uh, I don't really have a lot to say about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to, to mess around with, um, Doom, like the, the 1993 classic FPS game, um, made by id software uh, it's it's open source which is cool and so mm. it's been open source for like 20 years and so over time the community has taken that source and created different versions of it uh, and you know cleaned up the code and added features and so wait how is quake related to doom are the two related or am i just misremembering um they're made by the same company i see id software um and then something was a quake mod was that csgo uh, a couple things. Half Life. No, 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 no. Um, TF2. No. But oh, TF2 was built off. It was of a Half Life mod. Somehow, I don't understand yeah. how that works, but it, it, yeah. Well, Half Life had a multiplayer, uh, component. Half Life it did? One did. Yeah, actually, both Half Life did. It's oh just my Half goodness. Life, Half Life Two Deathmatch was like a separate application, and it, I don't know, it didn't really gain much traction. Full life consequences. <laughs> I know what that's. I've heard that, but I don't know what it's from. Uh, it, it was. It's just this like silly web comic with like a bunch of references because of how ridiculous it is. It, it was the a uh, brother of Gordon Freeman was the thing. It was like this bizarre, weird fan comic. It sounds like a weird YouTube series or something. It probably was at some point. I'm sure someone did a dub of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Quake, so Quake 3 was a, a very popular game and it was multiplayer only. It was just like super fast paced team, like, you know, arena style mm -hmm. deathmatch. Um, kind of like Unreal but, Tournament? Yeah, it, okay. it, it had had similarities with it. Unreal Tournament was kind of its big competitor. Mm. Um, but it, the engine it was built on top of um, id Tech, which is id's name for all of their engines, um, was just very extensible and it had really great mod tools and because it was when you have great mod tools on a really popular game you get a bunch of cool things kind of like um, how enderal spun out of skyrim i thought what is that i've never heard of it uh enderal is a complete skyrim and i think oblivion overhaul with its own narrative its own map its own npcs its own voicing its own quests like it's just oh, a, cool. a standalone mod that's for free if you own skyrim it's basically yeah. getting like another game on top of Skyrim. I I wish it and stuff like that is really cool and it's it's kind of a shame that so many games like don't have don't ship with with good mod tools. Like, you know, Doom, the original Doom also was something that 
generated a lot of mods and some things, you know, like TF2 um, and Counter-Strike were both full games. Uh, DayZ is another one that started out as mods and then just built a community. Um, you know, Dota is another mod it's origin. It was a Warcraft 3 mod originally. And then that became a whole I think a whole Tower genre. Defense came out of a mod from Warcraft even. It did, yeah, as, as far as I understand. I remember watching my childhood friend playing those tower defense maps, even. I was like, what are you playing? That doesn't look like World of War, or like, not even World of Warcraft, like Starcraft, or War I don't even know. Um, and he was just like, oh, it's a mod. And I was like, what's a mod? <laughs> yeah. But like the, the, the latest Doom games, the Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, don't ship with mod tools. And some people have been able to like, open up the binary the like assets with a hex mm -hmm. editor and like change stuff around What's the hex but, editor again uh it is a it's a a t tool that makes it easy to edit binary files um i see that's probably is, what dakota well, was talking about in the server the other day yeah we were gonna go somewhere and then i took us all on a tangent i forget where that was headed warcraft grandparent of many other games said kathy um, we began with me asking how you ended up in game development, and then I talked about uh, Google, but then somehow right, we diverted yeah. onto your project hobby, right? Because we were talking about how did you learn all this, and you said I googled all of it. And I was like, oh, talk about your time at Google. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I spent five years total at Google. Um, five years? Year... Yeah. Oh my god! What did you think it was you made it sound like you were only there for like a year or two. No, I was I was at Google LA for a year and a half. Uh, I think it was a year and a half, and then um, I, I maybe it was like four and a half years total. But um, yeah, it was because I, I I I moved I left to move to Boulder, and then like my my plan was to transfer, but the Boulder office is the most pop one of the most popular offices um, to transfer to in the company. It's it's second only to San Francisco. Why um, is that? Is it because of the location cost of living? Uh, yeah, Boulder is just a very popular area to move. Like, every, almost, it, it feels like everyone you meet there is from somewhere else. Like, when you meet an actual, like, Boulder native, it's like an event. Like, people actually, <laughs> like, people will tell you when they met a Boulder native. <laughs> but, um, it's, yeah, it's it's just like a... I don't know. There, there are a few reasons. I mean, I can tell you why I moved there. It has great outdoorsy stuff. That it's makes right sense. up against the mountains. Um, that makes there's a, lot a ton of, of hiking. Um, it's great for road biking and mountain biking. Um, that makes sense. It's like big enough to have culture. Like, you know, there's like a small theater, there's like bands and groups and stuff, but it's, it's also, it's like, I think 80,000 people, a hundred when the students are in town. Oh my goodness. So you can still, it's still small enough to like bike around and, um, you know, it's, it's also like fairly progressive. Um, Interesting. So yeah, it, it has a lot of, I don't know, nice things about it. And it's also absurdly expensive now, but it's not like <laughs> Of course, because all the tech expensive. money is moving there. Yeah. It, oh yeah. It also has a lot of different, like every type of tech, you know, not just oh, software, really? but like, yeah, there's aerospace, you know, oh God, um, that's cool biotech. I think a lot of it stemmed, there's a, you know, the university is kind of what started the town, the, was it CU Boulder? Um, and then I think just because that was there, like, sort of tech sort of started to grow up around that area. Um, like, originally, it was just a bunch of hippies living in the mountains. And I think the, the, the techies have driven them out. Oh, no. Now it's all yuppies. Freaking yuppies. Or like, old families who have, were there the whole time and are just now rich because their their property values went up. Did you know there's also a term called like a yappy? What's a yappy? Like a young Asian professional. <laughs> what Makes does yuppie stand for? Uh, just young professional. It's a... Let's see. Hello, hybrid. Welcome. How, yeah, how is chat? How is everyone? Uh, Spencer took us off on a tangent, and we went far, far on into Colorado. <laughs> hey, don't blame me. I am going to blame you. I'm having fun, but I'm still going to give you hell for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to turn on the light behind me. It's, it's starting to get dark in here. While you do that, I I, I, I hydrated. I finished my freaking soda. Um. However, I can get one of my little... 
cough drops so my throat doesn't die. Hello, Coda Z. How are you? Do you want to talk Wait. about cycling, Spencer? Or do you want to just talk about Google stuff and programming um, and game development and all that cool hardware content that I just learned so about? It's up to you. I'm, I'm happy talking about any of this stuff. I'm interested uh, in what chat wants to know. Personally, I was really about learning how the hardware renders things and all the like graphics stuff. And So is cool. graphics rendering considered low level because you have to work with all the math and the hardware and stuff? Um, I mean, yeah, I would, I would say so. I, I, it's worth adding the caveat that like low level and high level are kind of arbitrary. Like C, At this point? Used, okay. C used to be considered a high level language what? and now it's, it's very low level. Oh my God. Low level was assembler or, or, or like literally mm -hmm. writing punch cards, which. Oh, I forgot to turn off the uh, woo fudge. I have to turn off certain alerts to not destroy the uh, integrity of the chat or interview. <laughs> Redeemed uh woo. What do you have to do when someone redeems that? I have to go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I know, I know. Damn it, Sean. Uh, I can't edit my rewards while I'm actually up. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is if someone redeems that one cursed reward, I'll have to just ignore it for now. <laughs> How much does it cost? I'm not saying. It's only a thousand. <laughs> only a thousand? What do you mean I, only? I can... I can buy that. Stop! Don't buy that! No, you're supposed I'm... to be talking about things and yourself! <laughs> Would you like to oo-woo? Oo-woo! I don't know what it's supposed to sound like. That's... It's just like the the anime girl voice. Oh my god, Sean's egging you on. Buy it! Woo! <laughs> Sorry, I, I'll be nice to Ren today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now then, we went off a tangent. What if you have that as an woo together in interviews? <laughs> That'd be That's really extra. funny. However, some of the gentlemen that I will be bringing on to the channel are like, I don't know, in their like 40s or 50s. I'm not going to make them woo. I'm going to turn that off for those. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they even know what an woo is. Anyways, now that we've completely diverted, um, I digress. Where were we? Um, I guess before we got off of this topic, I was talking about kind of what GPUs are and you know what makes graphic them special. Graphic processing units. Right, but I mean, what what makes them special, especially like optimized for graphics processing right, as yes. opposed to a, a CPU, which is you know the the regular processor. Um, Wait, I have a so question, kind of, a completely yeah. vaguely related one. So, you know, CPU stands for Computer Processing Unit, correct? Central Processing Unit. Oh, Central Processing Unit, really? Okay. Um, in that case, what is what is a CPU in the context of Super Smash? Um, I like, think it's... So, I think... C, so, I remember, like, at least when I was a kid, like, some people would just refer to computers as CPUs. Ah. And, and so I think it's they just... hold over from that. Yeah, I think it just means compute. Like Nintendo was looking for a th a, a TLA for, you know, a three letter acronym. Because aren't aren't all of the it's a TLA a three letter acronym? That's inaccurate, though. You know why? Because if you just spell it out like that, say all the letters, that's called an initialism. That's not actually an acronym. You got me. Did you know that it's only considered an acronym if you can pronounce it without using the letters? I do actually like like laser. So like TLA is just wrong. It's so wrong. Okay, fine. A claw. <laughs> a tlee. A TLI. Well, a tlee wouldn't be a. It'd be a three-letter mm -hmm. initialism. Yeah, but then you'd have to say it TLI. So yeah, it's, so it's a TLI. It's, it's like. From now on, like... we are going to remove TLA from our vocabulary and only call it a TLI. Honestly, I, I think most, the, almost all the time, I just see it typed. So it's, I don't know that there is a dif a difference between, between those. You can't when, call like, something an acronym if it's not an acronym. That's a misnomer. Well, but if I type TLA, how do you distinguish that as an acronym versus an initialism? Simply because you would read it out as TLA. Nobody says TLA. But if if no one reads it out. 
Like if, if, I, a tree does, re- if a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? That is the argument we're on. <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest. If a tree falls. Attila. Ganza says it's Attila. Attila. Ugh. Anyways, anyways. Um, anyways. Uh, we will let chat decide. You know what? I'll run it as a poll. Is TLA an acronym or an initialism? <laughs> I think you're just pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> yes, well, everybody can fight over it in, in the poll. Uh, we will make their duration two minutes. But while that runs, uh, you and I can discuss other things. <clears throat> yeah, so so the, the reason why graphics processing units are... Let's see, yeah. So I, I kind of had a thread going a while back about how... Um, and, and and the very first GPUs uh, were basically just like good at rendering triangles, and they mm-hmm. they had like they they almost weren't processors. They had like they were just what what's called fixed function. Like they had hardware that did one thing, and that was you know render lights a specific way and render triangles a specific way. Mm-hmm. And so over time, um, we started to see more general purpose. Uh, graphics cards um like the old graphics cards didn't run code you would you would use your your graphics programming library to say render triangles render lights and it would just do that whereas now um a lot of what graphics cards do is run code that developers have written that sort of specify you know how it should produce certain graphics okay um one of the reasons why gpus are very good at graphics specifically is that um not only do they have a lot of a lot of threads or cores, mm-hmm. you know, so not only can they do hundreds of things at once, but each individual thread um, or each individual core um, has what's called uh, wide instructions, which oh, means <laughs> okay. So on your CPU, most of the time when you do, let's say, a multiplication, mm-hmm. you're taking one number by one number and you multiply them together, and that gives you one number. Okay. Well, a wide instruction takes that and it basically does uh, Do instead of using single numbers. Math. You say common core math. I'm going to kick you off this channel right now. <laughs> I, I, common core was before my, or after my time. <laughs> I or know. No, it was, was that's it? the joke. That's the okay, joke. It yeah. was after our time. What do you take me for, a Zoomer? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, so GPUs, instead of just multiplying <laughs> one number at a time per thread, they can take, you know, eight numbers or 16 numbers and multiply them by 16 numbers to get you know 16 new numbers uh all in a single step and so you have you know hundreds of cores and each of those cores per instruction can process 16 or 32 different uh things now, so are those numbers the fact that they can do 16 or 32 is that based on like bits and stuff because everything's by um, like eight no, I don't think so. It I mean, so those are actually to be by um, it, coincidence. It's yeah. It seems like usually. I think it's like the same reason why the most common numbers of cores and CPUs are two, four, and eight. I think it's just like it's easiest for hardware designers to double stuff when they add more of it. Fair enough. It, Fair enough. I don't think there's like a specific limitation that makes it such that they it has instructions have to be this wide. Um, so anyways, the summary is that graphic GPUs, um, are specialized at doing a lot of, like a ton of things all at once. It's like the same thing across, you know, so if you think about graphics, um, you know, a 1080p display has what, like 4 million pixels in it. Okay. And so the reason, like, you. it's, let's assume it's about 4 million, million pixels. So. Uh, you know, a GPU is not rendering one pixel at a time. It's it's rendering a lot of these pixels in parallel. Um, and that's, you know, so you have hundreds of cores. Each one can do 16, you know, each one essentially can handle 16, rendering 16 pixels simultaneously. Um, so as opposed to a CPU, which uh, is much more limited, um, you know, the, the calculations that the G- GPU is doing 
are not super complex. It's just they can do a lot of them at the same time. And so that's why they've become useful for machine learning. Um, machine learning under the hood is basically all just matrix multiplications. Um, oh my gosh, I, I matrix... need you to slow down for a moment because I'm still processing cores, 16 something another's wide instructions. I heard terms thrown everywhere and you did a fantastic yeah. job explaining them. My brain's just like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is the kind of stuff I'd have to like take notes to actually process what's going on. So yeah. do you mind if I go grab like a notebook? Not not because I'm I need to actually know this stuff, it's more for processing it, or else I'm gonna sit here like I'm still yeah. thinking about the last thing Spencer said. You're, you're single threaded, you can only do one thing at a time. Did you just call me single threaded like an insult? I'm kind I don't of think a, it's is it an insult to be single threaded? I, I guess it could be taken as one but i didn't i didn't mean it that way <laughs> i'm gonna um, tell tyler you called me single threaded oh no <laughs> chat asks is it gif or jif um i i say gif i think technically the jif is probably more correct oh no i looked at this i don't old like the sound of it and it's all fanfic ideas oh no <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be like a freaking programming notebook it's not it's fanfic okay I'm ready. I, mine is a programming notebook i just have the names of a bunch of like functions I just kind of randomly written do not say jaffix if you say jaffix i will <laughs> eat you out of this channel <laughs> jaffix i hate it i hate it take it away <laughs> that's funny that's hilarious i hope someone clips that anyways freaking jaffix Hate yeah, it. it's disgusting. Um, yeah, I was about to write Jaffix in my book instead of all the things that you're saying. Yeah, so like Define if you Jaffix. take if you take Bitcoin mining for example, like oh God. A, a common metaphor for Bitcoin mining is that you're just solving math puzzles, right? You're doing math problems. Well, GPUs are really, really good at that. They're really good at just when it comes so. When it comes to things that GPUs are not good at, logic, GPUs are not very good at logic. Wait, wait, before we get into the logic and the computing and all of that, mm. why does Bitcoin mining work as, why is it called mining? Uh, mining is just a metaphor. It doesn't have anything to do with the technical side of it. Um, okay. It's, you're, you're basically uh, digging through, I mean, you're, you're ch like, you're choosing random numbers and you're, it's, it's basically sophisticated guess and check. And so they just compared that to mining because it sounds nicer than sophisticated guess and check. Now That's my interpretation of it. Why are they doing sophisticated guess and check? Does it have to do with the whole blockchain ledger stuff? Uh, yeah, so that that has to do with how Bitcoin is designed. That has to do with uh, how like, transactions are recorded, I believe. Like decentralize the exchange of Money. Uh, yeah, so I'm not, like, I I kind of know how Bitcoin works, but, like, not in a way where I could, like, explain it, like, I tr where I could explain it really well to, like, non-technical people. Like, I tried I explaining like to I my parents. I vaguely explain blockchain to people, but that's only uh -huh. because, I mean, I only worked at that company for, like, a month, and they tried to explain blockchain to me, so I had to read, like, a sh shipload of articles on blockchain and how that works and mm -hmm. i was just like why do we need blockchain why do we need to do this and they're like well because people are going to do awful things i was like why are we making technology for this why don't we just work on the people and they couldn't answer me i was just it's because like it's because there is no answer blockchain is a, a solution in search of a problem like is my opinion on it i don't know i i understand the the theory behind securing things using blockchain but if you need to use blockchain, it means there is a problem with society. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the only problem that it truly solves is allowing for payments uh, that are sort of not centrally tracked, not or not tracked, that are not centrally like controlled or mm -hmm. by any like you Entity. know authority. Right. So if you're buying drugs on Silk Road, like oh, it's a great use case for that. Don't say that on my stream. Do not tell people to use blockchain technology for that. Well, I don't think Silk Road exists anymore. Is, is what is? 
Actually, I don't want to ask. I do not <laughs> want to ask on screen because then people are going to start looking into it and be like, "What is this?" Right. So if you're if you're buying goods on the dark web, like that's a, a use oh case God, for stop. it. Stop! But... Stop explaining it to them. But like when it comes to legitimate use cases, like yeah, I, I feel that. It... I do not want to encourage anyone to investigate the dark web. No, it's. I don't know that this is still within Twitch's terms of service. Let us not. <laughs> don't use the dark web, kids. <laughs> stay, stay in school. Don't use the dark web. Did I, did I mention to you, Spencer? I, I wasn't gonna say anything so that we could have the most candid, fun experience. We actually have staff from Twitch watching this right now. Uh oh. <laughs> That's why I'm like, please do not encourage any illegal activity. I strictly discourage illegal activity. Disclaimer, well, Spencer is not advocating for use of the dark web. May or may not include the dark web. <laughs> Anyways, um... Now then, now then, let us, uh, recover from that one. I don't know, I just realized my camera's going very... I have this issue, uh... My camera has, like, an auto white point setting. I see that just how it goes. Worse. It goes like warm and cold, and I'm just like. So I'm actually, I actually have a light behind me that I'm changing. It can change uh -huh. the color temperature, but wow. every time I change the color temperature, the webcam tries to like change its white point to compensate, and sometimes it ends up like overshooting. I see. And then I just look green. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll stick with this one. I think this is the. I don't want to like. I don't know. I do really like my webcam. It's, it's I'm a sorry, Logitech I just feel one. like I need to say something in chat to just get rid of Jaffix just sitting there on the third line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still laughing at that! God damn it. Anyways, uh, can we talk about cycling? <laughs> sure. Let's talk about cycling, so I stopped losing my mind at that. <laughs> uh, that is not... well. That is actually better, <laughs> distirely, because I was talking with a friend the other day, and she basically agreed with me. Oh, you've got layers. And I was like, yes, I'm an ogre, so can't you can't hurt me with that one. You cannot hurt me with the Shrek cosplay. Oh my gosh, it'd be Shrek for Halloween. That'd be so much fun. You know why that'd be fun? Because I can just run around singing Smash Mouth. And people will throw candy at me. I don't have to go so, up to the porch, ring the doorbell, get candy. They will just throw candy at me to shut up. <laughs> so the first CD that I ever owned was Smash Mouth's Astro Lounge, the album that contains All Star. That's beautiful. And it was. And there are videos of my sister and I at like four or five years old. So wait, our wait. living room. Sorry, yeah. finish your story, and then I have a thing after you finish your story. Anyways, there, there are pictures of my sister and I, like, dancing in the living room in front of the mirror to Smash Mouth's All-Star before it was cool. That's adorable. <laughs> now now that you've brought up your sister, would you be willing to talk about the superfan stuff? Um, I, or is that I guess no? so. I don't, <laughs> I, 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 don't have a, I don't have a lot to say about it. I just feel like the explanation uh, itself deserves to be recorded for all posterity's sake. Yeah. So my sister is a um, a performer at Universal Studios Osaka. Um, she is a, a character actor, which means she plays or played. Uh, she actually she got laid off oh, so a few sorry. weeks ago. Good. Yeah, they've been. Um, it's been kind of difficult. Yeah, like it sounds like the Japanese government kind of keeps waffling back and forth between like, we need to shut everything down to like, you know, keep COVID under control. And we need to show that things are okay so we can host the Olympics. By the um, way, on this channel, we refer to the pandemic as uh, the Backstreet Boys reunion. <laughs> okay. I will, I will try my best to do oh, that. Oh no, that's just I... a, that's just a reference to Game Grumps though. That's what they call it. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't watch them. But anyways, so she would, you know, go out a few times a week and play her character and wave at people and stuff. And I guess uh, when she got the job, they warned her that, like, you know, you got to watch out for the super fans. She's like, what? what's a super fan? They're like, well, some people get really, really into these characters and they, you know, they'll, they'll figure out what days you work and they'll show up on those days and they'll, they'll take pictures of you and 
you know, send, you know, post them to their Instagram accounts. And some of them, we've had issues with them, like following people home and say, so just be careful. Um, she didn't have any issues with that, but she did notice, yeah, there are a few people who like every day she worked or almost every day she worked, there would be like, you know, oh, there's that one person who would see her and, you know, wave to her and take pictures. And like one of them sent, like actually printed out like a photo book and would send her like one every month oh of all the like photos that she, uh, you know, just photos that they'd taken that lasted for a couple months. The best story though was <clears throat> she was off work in like a diner or something. And uh, I guess one of the super fans saw her and came up to her and said, oh, hi, like, you probably don't know who I am, but I, and I was just wondering if I could get your autograph graph as your character. And she said, oh yeah, I recognize you. And the super fan literally fainted. They were so just, they could not believe that my sister, this, this character recognized them, you know, cause they, they showed up like, they showed up regularly and you know if all you're doing is just sitting there and like waving at people from a balcony like you kind of notice those things yeah th there's not much else to like notice so uh yeah if, after they recovered she gave him the signature and they they went on their way now tag your favorite characters who would do that sorry i missed it but which characters did your sister portray uh i so now that she's not working there anymore, I might be able to say, but she she told us not to not to tell people when she got the job. Uh, I don't know if that's like a like an NDA kind of thing. I th I think she might have had an NDA of some sort, but yeah, just you can I think tell Kathy off stream. And and partially, yeah, partially. I mean, I'll tell you off stream, but partially because of the super fans, and partially, I don't know. It's it's not my secret to tell. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she's yeah. actually staying in Japan for for a Isn't while. Is she she's... kind of stuck in Japan for a while? No, she can come back at any oh, okay, time. I see. Um, but yeah, she's trying to figure something out, get another she's job, stay there. She's what? Yeah, vibing. pretty much. I think that's cool, though. How does she end up in? That f excuse me, that field, is she trying to become like a professional actor? Uh, she majored in musical theater in college. So she is an actress. Um, and yeah, that, that particular role, they actually go around and do interviews like at several, dif a bunch of different cities worldwide for performers. And she made the cut. And so they actually paid, they flew her out to Japan, like paid for her. They have like company housing. And so, uh, like all the people on her floor were uh, performers of some sort. Uh, her best friends were were both Terminators, so they were they were both bodybuilders. Oh and goodness. so, <laughs> yeah, we we would ask her how the Terminators were doing. How the Terminators were doing? Oh my god! The, oh my god. the worst one was they. <laughs> so there was one one show in one show in the. Um, in the park, which I guess uh, was featured f featured like little people. Um, I think it might have been like an Oompa Loompa thing or something, because uh, I believe Universal owns the rights to that. But for some reason, like you know, they they hired uh, foreign actors to play the Oompa Loompas for all little <laughs> people, and they put them all on the same floor of the dormitory. So like, there's just one floor where like everyone is short. I'm sorry, I'm still thinking about the Jaffix thing and the Loompas now. <laughs> and I got you. I my got my you brain's good. just stuck on that. It's gonna be just like etched <laughs> into my memory. Oh my yeah. god, I hate it. I'm, I'm gonna tell my friends about that one. <laughs> uh, so, so, just like slip it into casual conversation. Be like, hey, did you get the new Jaffix card? And they'll be like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> JPU. <laughs> Anyways, anyways. Actually, I think a JPU is a... Did you know there was actually a CPU that ran Java at some point? Like, don't, instead don't, of... Don't all CPUs run Java? So, s Java runs on computers by having software called a virtual machine, which okay. essentially... So, Java actually is, like, its own... You know, the same way that regular CPUs have their own, like, 
set of instructions that they execute. Java is actually compiled down to its special set of instructions that the, the Java virtual machine, which is software that you install, uh, will run those instructions. Well, there is actually a, a special CPU that ran Java instructions. So I guess that's, that would be a JPU. <laughs> the history of the JPU. You are welcome, everybody, for that yeah. one. Um, oh, so like when you actually execute a Java program on your computer, it has to use JVM to run it? Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. That that that's, tracks. That's why you have to install that thing. Otherwise, the program won't even run, huh? Because it has to compile down into that and then, then, I assume, you know, print to your console and talk to your computer and all that. Yeah, or run applets in your browser. Applets. It was, I mean, kind of the same way that, like, Flash, you know, oh, you had, gotcha. like, Flash embeds. You can, you would embed, like, Java. And it was also like a big security nightmare <laughs> that went away. I'm sure. Um, cycling. Yeah. That's 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 my interest, but only because I watched that freaking anime, and I want to rewatch that freaking anime now. I watched, yeah, I watched the first two seasons of Yalokita. Nice. I think it was, yeah, maybe like two and a half or something like that. Yeah, I never watched the fourth season because by that point I was like, "Oh, everybody's super into this fandom, and I'm I'm good, I'm good." <laughs> but I I'd, I'd like mm -hmm. to rewatch it on my own or with friends who have not seen it before. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. But anyway, actually, did I ever ask you who your favorite character was from that anime? I don't know if I have one. I I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> That's not your thing. I... I didn't can yeah I, I didn't really connect with the characters super well. Uh, I think I, my main interest was the the bikes and just kind of seeing how seeing extra it is. Yeah, seeing cycling racing represented in a piece of fictional media <laughs> that was pretty entertaining. My favorite part was how when they shifted gears, the like sparks flew from the the cassette. Yes, that was so yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, I love how that's funny for you, but for anyone who doesn't cycle, it's like oh, this is so dramatic. Actually, <laughs> no, the f funniest part was I was watching it on Amazon Prime for the first season or two, uh -huh. uh, which is actually not my account. It's my parents' account. Okay. And so when I started watching that, I was telling them about it just because I got, you know, I was so like, I thought it was so like cool and I don't know, cool. Just like, it, it was, you know, just a delightful. It amused me. <laughs> I was telling them about it, and so they were like, you know, they usually just watch TV in the evenings, and like, it showed up on their recommendations list, so they actually watched like five minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> what did they think? Uh, they said, yeah, it wasn't really our thing. <laughs> the cycling anime Yawamushi Pedal? Yes, that is what we were talking about. <laughs> Spencer's parents watched five minutes of Yawapeta. Yeah, they- And they're... it's indirectly my fault. Yeah. It's actually funny because they've been they've been consuming a bunch of like they've been watching a bunch of shows about like Japan and Japanese culture just because my sister went there. Nice. And so they're you know, the, there's this one show like Cool Japan, which is just every episode. It's like, you know, there's one about like how glasses are made in Japan. And if you go to a if you go to get your glass, get glasses, they have like a, a fucking machine, you know, they'll the store will measure your eyes or whatever they that process is called and it's they have a fucking machine order. yeah no they that will like they have all of the lenses in stock they have a machine that will fucking bend like bend the metal around the lenses and your glasses will be ready in an hour and you pay like a normal amount of money for these glasses and it's so cool like, Tyler's here and my arms disappear when i do that okay so anyways a let me if you like the sports anime, have you seen Run with the Wind? Uh no. I still need to finish watching Daya no Ace and Surune, but welcome Tyler. It's Spencer. <laughs> Hello. It's it 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 they. I'm not too green. Oh yeah, it went back to greening me. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I think you're too self conscious about that. I'm just gonna change it. My video is right, so I just look very red. See, yeah, actually, this this camera is cool. It has a lot of. I just I can... hope Tyler doesn't redeem anything super cursed. I can zoom. Oh my god! Not... I, I can change I the focus. That. I didn't need that. That was so. <laughs> I can focus. See, this this camera has like insane macro focus. 
but if I like scoot, if I go like here, it like starts, it, it can't focus on me when I'm like, you know, four feet away. <laughs> I don't know why they designed it like that. <laughs> kind of a strange it's like, design trade-off. Look trade at off. my finger. Yeah. All right. See, there we the go. Zoom. <laughs> oh. There. That's like that's that's better. Obviously, you're supposed to stick your face about one centimeter from the lens. <laughs> yeah, I just gotta get real close. Oh no! No! Stop! You can see my pores. Stop! <laughs> This makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, me too. Me too, <laughs> Kathy. I'm so uncomfortable right now. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, what, 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 what? We we haven't really talked about the cycling, cycling part of it. We talked a little bit about yeah. the game development, and Tyler's just like, "Oh hell yeah, give me more of that, Spencer." <laughs> I know you want to get a bike at some point. I'm excited for when that that yes, happens. I found out that someone from my cohort also cycles. She was like, "Oh my gosh, you want to cycle? You should get into it. It's super fun." I'm like, "Yeah, I just gotta save up for the Spencer." <laughs> yeah. I didn't check what kind of bike she has. Let me see. Let me see if I can see the logo in her. Just one second. I'm very <laughs> bike curious. Bike check. Now. It's bike so check. funny. So my 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 parents also work. Well, not also. They work in the bike industry, and so anytime like I, I was in the car with with all three or all three of us were in the car, we were we pulled up to a stoplight and there was a a cyclist stopped at the stoplight and all of us crane, turned our head to like look. My mom was like, what kind of mount does he have for his computer? And I'm like, what kind of bike is that? My dad's like, oh, it's titanium. It's definitely titanium. I'm like, really? I don't see a logo. And She has a giant. Oh, okay. I still they make a... like everything. I still want a Pinarello. Just, just to... Hello, Mercules. Welcome. Just, just to... Just because of Naruko. Like, explicitly because of Naruko being my best boy. That's unfortunate because they're a, a very expensive brand. Are they really? Why they're do like, I have expensive taste? They're like the expensive brand. It's Seriously? like half of what you're paying for is their name. Yeah. I mean they they do how make good stuff. How did he afford one? How did how did I, I tweeted one? that in my tweet. How did he about, afford one? Like, He's like the, broke. The cheapest bike they make is like three or four thousand dollars. What? No, but yes. you can get like an entry level road racer for like fourteen hundred. Not from Pinarello, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Pinarello. So just... you, they, they have been making bikes forever, and you could get like a, a vintage Pinarello for you know a reasonable amount of money, but you know not not one of the like fancy new ones. I don't need a fancy new one. I I, I would buy a vintage bike. That sounds way cooler than getting a fancy new one. Uh, I should yeah. explain from Mercules. Uh, this is Spencer. My, how do I describe you? Friends? We went to we went to college together. Oh okay. Okay. I mean, I, I've been demoted, I guess. What do you mean demoted? From friend. You are my friend. Okay. I just wanted to give context for our friendship. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I do have this command since you updated me and I You are my associate. <laughs> associate. No, but uh yes. So we know each other from, from university, so that's what, nine years now? Coming up, yeah. Coming uh, actually, up. I don't know. Wait, 20, 2013? What? Seven no, years. No, no, no. I graduated in 2015, oh, no. so we started in 2011, dude. Oh, yeah. No, 2013 is when I dropped out. That's, I always get the dates confused. <laughs> when did I start? When did I drop out? It's all the same. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we, we met... Uh, I think, yeah, we, we were in the same dorm and we met because I, I helped uh, Ren get their Wi-Fi set up because you this these are the days when each dorm room had their own Wi-Fi router, which was like a terrible way to do things. Oh my God, you look at your Wi-Fi list and it's just like, I like 20 have, networks. should have come up with like a very mean. I for, yeah, I think there are some good ones, but I don't remember them. I don't. It's been too long. I'm sure Tyler knows a couple of them. I'm sure Kathy <laughs> knows some of them. But anyways, um, yes, now that now that Mercules is here and now that it's a party, I mean it was already a party, but now it's a bigger party. Um oh, yeah. Shall we flip on back over to game development? I thought we just got to cycling. You wanna talk about more cycling? Okay, fine. What kind of bike do you have? 
I have a specialized Roubaix, which is a, a uh, so a Roubaix is what's called an endurance bike. So it's, it's basically a, like similar to the, to a road racer, you know, it's a road bike. It has the, the curved handlebars. Um, but it's different from a race bike and that just the, the position is a bit more comfortable. So instead of your back, you know, being like almost parallel to the ground, Oof. you can kind of sit upright a bit more. I see. Um, and so the, the, the bike is actually named after a, a race called the Paris Roubaix, uh, which is a, a race, one day race in Paris, uh, oh. much of which is ridden over literal cobblestones. Ah. Like, so the bike is designed to be, you know, ridden so fast on, on both road and like cobblestone. Brrr. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, Sean's just like, Roubaix, short for Rutabaga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you like that one, huh? <laughs> Specialized Rutabaga. <laughs> Specialized Rutabaga. That's really yeah. funny. My, uh, my mom's not good at foreign words, and she, I think at one point she was just trying to say it, and she forgot, she called it, the, like, the Robido. So my dad, who also has one, called it the, you know, I was gonna go out on a riot on the Robi, Robido for, like, <laughs> four years. Oh my god, that's so funny. Whew. Um, should we explain the sport of cycling to the chat? Because before I watched Yawapeta I didn't even realize that cycling was a thing. I just knew that like people rode on bikes and people could ride on bikes very fast, but I didn't realize people raced on bikes even though it's like, hello, the Tour de France. I'm just like, uh, oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, like, I, I didn't make that connection, you know? I had a friend in Boulder who asked me like, what type of stuff are you into? And I was like, oh yeah, I've been riding my bike a lot, you know, cycling. He's like, wait, you ride a bike? Like, like, like for kids? <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, it's a little different. And there's like, nothing wrong on. with riding kids' bikes. But... I'm faster than a car, so like, don't even, don't even. Yeah, that is pass. I have passed cars on like mountain roads a few times. Oh, that shit is fun. I bet it is. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of yeah. It it get it gets a little sketchy because you don't have much room to do oh my it. Gosh, but... are Foten and Ishev here too? I see y'all. Have fun. I hope you're enjoying the conversation. As we lose our minds over children bikes and Jaffix. <laughs> <laughs> Ride a children's bike for a children's sport? No, it, it wasn't even children's bike. It was just, he just heard biking, cycling, and he was like, isn't that what children do? <laughs> like, that's where his mind was as far as that hobby went. I mean, I kind of can't I don't think blame he, him. I don't think he respects it much more after I ex like explained it to him, but if he I thought saw it was funny. It, if he saw it, if he saw one of those like GoPro videos, I bet he would respect it. Jaffix interchange format. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, I guess I did have the opposite reaction where I was like, there were some people at the house, and I'd gotten locked out of the car and. Uh, at the grocery store after, and after walking home they're hanging out with my partner at the time and i was like oh hey everyone like i just gotta ride my bike to the store to like get and it was like a five minute bike ride you know to get unlock the car like really you're gonna ride your bike and you know oh well, well, well i'll drive you over like no it's a five minute bike ride oh okay so i get my bike and they're like oh you ride a specialized oh well, no <laughs> wonder like and i was like i didn't oh i, I guess that has some brain recognition it's ride a specialized I'm trying to think who in Yawapeta wrote the specialized. I can't remember. Specializer. Special so special they have the off brand name. The off brand names. I love that. It's like Specializer, Glant, Skolt. <laughs> the Look Bike. I think Look is actually Look, isn't it? Yeah. That's a Japanese brand. Maybe they got the Maybe. licensing from them. Oh, uh, and then what they also had the track. Cervello. What was the. What was Cervelo. the Cannondale? No, Cervelo what... was something different. I don't remember what Cannondale was in the in the anime. Um, but Desirely is asking. I just noticed the updated stream title: speed running video games, like all those pro Super Mario sixty four speed run that's. Yes, except no. Um, I am interested in speed running, and I've, I uh, I've been playing Doom Eternal, which is the it was released this year. Um. 
and I've been trying, I've been copying speed running strats because uh, I'm trying to beat the game uh, in Ultra Nightmare, which is the hardest difficulty. And if you die, it resets all the way back to the beginning of the game. And so the so only way for me to, to speed run permadeath? Well, so think about it this way. The thing about permadeath is if you die, you have to restart from the beginning. So if you beat the game as fast as possible, like, you know, if I beat the game using really safe, slow strats, I could get four hours into a run, five hours into a run, die and go back to the beginning. But if I do fast strategies, at least when I die, it's not like, oh my God, I just lost, you know, hours and hours of progress. It's like, oh, okay, well, I only I lost like 30 minutes now. of progress. Also, the speedrunners are just really good at like figuring out often in that game, fast is safe. Like, you know, the, whenever you kill stuff, you get you get extra health. And so the faster you kill stuff, like the more likely you are to survive. Uh, Tyler um, wants to clarify, what is the world record Doom Eternal? Um, so for, for any percent, no major glitches. So there are kind of a few different categories. There's any percent, like anything goes, and that one is like 20 minutes. And basically every level is just like that you find, you go to the nearest edge and you do this glitch that allows you to launch yourself infinitely high in the air. And then you just kind of like fly to the end of the level. It's basically that, you know, sometimes there are like multiple triggers they have to hit, but it's it's very degenerate. So that's like 20 minutes or something. <laughs> very degenerate ridiculous. is how you describe so be, it. <laughs> because of it, how degenerate it is, the community, like also the other thing is it's frame rate dependent. So the more frames you get, the easier it is and the like the faster you will go up in the air. So the community <laughs> banded together and they're like, all right, this kind of sucks to run and like it's not that fun to watch either. So they made a category called no major glitches where they took like they sort of went glitch by glitch and voted like, should this be allowed in no major glitches? Yes or no. And kind of made a run where you still actually like are in bounds for most of the game. But you know, there's still some cool skips, but it's like um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I respect any percent. It's just like I don't want to do that because that just looks hard. I, I and like you're respect it. It's, it's not for me. You're, you're staring at skyboxes for like ninety percent of the time. You're in the, or oh or God. at the ground trying to like maximize your frame rate so you can get a, a better jump. Like I'm learning so much about speed running, and I I don't think I wanted to. I I know things I did not need to know. Um, but anyway, so no major glitch is any that. percent is like. <laughs> an hour or an hour and 20 minutes something like that <laughs> yeah you got um, the man to laugh <laughs> skyrim bull speed run what what does that you mean? have like special some special privileges where you should chat first it's because i'm looking at an obs i'm not looking at uh obs handles chat i i actually OBS don't can know take how in the stream directly oh, okay. from the channel so that's cool uh, my time is that I have not beaten the game yet, so um, <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> get back to me. Oh, actually, like... <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I've I've gotten to like the third level. I I beat Doom 2016 on Ultra Nightmare, but Doom 2016 is a lot less hard than Eternal. Eternal is just like even watching speedrunners stream, they're just like, "Fuck this game!" Like, I hate this game. This game is too hard. Like, after they just die, like you make one wrong move, and like you know all. All, even the littlest enemies can kill you in like two or three hits. And so you make one wrong move and then you're just dead. I'm sorry, I need to pause for a moment because like I inhaled. And when I inhaled, my body moved with the moment, like the movement, right? And then doing so, mm -hmm. my shoulder pulled up and that muscle pulled on something. And now I'm just like, oh, oh that hurt. So I breathed oh. and hurt myself. I hate that. Don't you just oh. hate it when like you're trying to exist and your body's just like, ouch. Oof, ouch, and your, my yeah, your back does something. Oh, I think I slept oh, on my shoulder. Oh, Dysterly, if you should, uh, the the Morrowind speedrun, if you like Elder Scrolls speedruns, is really good. That's super degenerate. They beat the game in like 12 minutes. <laughs> what did they do? <laughs> um, So like the first four minutes are normal. They go outside, if I remember correctly, they go outside of... um the main area and there's a scripted event where this guy falls from the sky and he gives you three scrolls that allow you to jump like they just give you like you know times a hundred thousand jump strength so you can literally jump across like half the map so it's just like you fly into the air and it's like loading 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 and eventually 
the speedrunner lands in a very specific place where they kill a shop owner, steal like a few scrolls for damage and tell and like levitation. Um, so they, they go, if you're familiar with Morrowind, in order to beat the game, you need a special weapon and a special piece of armor, I think. So they, they go to those two particular places. Um, they use a glitch where there are these special boots that give you, they're boots of binding speed, where they give you like, they make you four times faster or something, but you can't see. <laughs> but if you, if you use a magic resist spell and put on the boots, they, the, you can see a little bit. It only blinds you like 90% instead of 100%. <laughs> so like the majority of the speed run is like, played with this like 90% black filter over the screen and you can like barely see anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so that it's like, like a it's just, metaphor for life. It's like yeah, so with the the final game like the way that you're supposed to beat the game, you get the special weapon, but the special weapon can't be we like normally if you wield the special weapon, it will kill you until you get some spell that counteracts that. So they skip the spell. And what they do, if you equip the weapon, attack, and then immediately un unequip it within like two frames or something, it doesn't do the self damage that kills you. So they like equip it and stab and put it away, and equip it and put it and stab, you know, like, <laughs> so that's how they beat the game. And I hate it. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. I hate it. <laughs> this is worse than the Jaffix. <laughs> uh, that that was yeah. That's one of my favorite speedruns of all time because I saw it. And I was just like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> I think I've only watched like one speedrun. I think it might have been a uh, Ross O'Donovan Rubber Ninjas speedrun of Skyrim. The entire time, Danny's just like, "Ross, what? Ross, Ross, what is? What are you? No!" <laughs> just seems so distraught. Yeah. There's a like I a, wanted to watch them IG... properly play the game, and I was like, "Oh, he's gonna speak. Oh, that's a glitch. Oh, that's an exploit." <laughs> yeah. Um. There's a a video series game devs react to speedruns. Yes, I've seen um, that going around Twitter. Some of them are really good. Like the Doom Eternal one is really good because the developers are like, "Our game's not broken." Like you know, they're like, oh, "I can't wait to see what happens." And the you know, it's like two minutes into the game, and the the runner like looks at the ground for three seconds, and then just. Pshh, and they're like what just happened and then they two seconds later you know land at the end of level trigger and they're like oh man this isn't good <laughs> this is <laughs> have you seen that video that tiktok going around of like developers and qas and then one of my connections uh, retweet, quote retweeted that saying game developers versus speedrunners and it's like the the, the the developer you know is saying um the square okay. hole Wait, what is this? I saw the speed run dev oh. reacts to Hades. Oh. Oh, who um, reacted to that one? Who was who at the staff at Supergiant would react to that one? Was it Greg? Was it Darren? Oh, I need to know. Was it Amir? I'm sorry, I know their names. I just I look on their like team page and I just I know their names. We're on a first name basis. Greg and Amir reacted to it. That's fantastic. Greg is their producer and main writer, and then Amir is their I think like co-founder and the guy who does the um, actual programming. I think he created the end. Extended the engine? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. Darren actually QAs all the games. Did you know that? Like, Darren Corb himself will play the games and test them and make sure they are winnable on, like, full settings. That's what you gotta do in a small studio. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's why he was telling me all the strats. He's like, oh, you do all these things up higher. Take your imp all the way out here, and then you know there's a skill you take, and the imp dies, it turns into a portal. So then you, your imp, you sack it, and then you like take your character and you just portal all the way over to the pyre, and then boom, you score. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was fantastic. He was so into it. I mean, he got really into telling me Yahtzee strategies, so of course he's into everything else. Oh, never like mind, just Greg game? and Amir. Or dice game? Yahtzee the dice game, yes. Darren Corb kept pivoting from me asking him Hades development questions to be like, oh yeah, and then so you do this for Yahtzee. I was like, what? <laughs> it was fantastic right, having lunch you, with him. 
when you brought up QA, I, I thought you were going to talk mention the TikTok of the um, the person playing with a child's toy, or it's like different shaped holes, and you have to put the square in the square hole. That's exactly the... what I was talking about. Yes, that's what I was trying to explain. It's the 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 the, the square. Oh, <laughs> the, the semicircle wasn't this. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you. I was about to search for it because now I'm very curious. Oh my god, that's that's something to ask him about. Hmm. Man. Yeah, I I like speedruns. They're they're it's just a fun way to like see see people play the game, and developers have different reactions to it. Like the the Doom Eternal developers are like really mad when they're watching it, and they actually like patched all of the glitches that they saw saw in the or almost all the glitches they saw in the reaction video which is why speedrunners will down patch the game to 1.0 to <laughs> to run that category that makes sense <laughs> i didn't realize that down patching was a thing but also thank you tyler have fun enjoy your life see ya it's like dindin's time for me i'm gonna actually text my fam and be like is dinner ready and then if dinner's ready i'm gonna have to bounce but we will raid someone if that is the case oop that was that was loud uh, let me check real fast. Mm. How are you feeling? How, or how are you holding up? Because I know we have been up for an, almost an hour and a half now. Just... Um, I'm get, yeah, I'm getting a little tired. Uh... Yeah, that's why I generally don't go over two hours, because I know it's long. Mm -hmm. Chaos Hunt is doing Nino Kuni again? You want to go visit Justin? Do you want to call it Spencer, or do you want to just talk about like something, wrap up, promote a thing, you know, shill your, shill your adventures? Oh, what would I even promote? I don't know. Just don't promote give your give money to Autism Speaks. I guess. <laughs> I that that is valid. Would you like to go into why? Um, because they are not, they don't have any autistic people in their leadership, and they've promoted a number of harmful anti-autistic myths they're generally founded and run for caregivers of autistics and mm -hmm. not actual autistic people of which i am one right so it's kind of oops that's not what i wanted to do it's kind of weird to be using this line with uh, this emote but if you feel so inclined that will be our raid chant if you want to do a raid chant you don't have to do a raid chant but you can do a raid chant Thank you to everybody who came by. Thank you, Spencer, for being on. We can always do a follow-up and talk about all the things that we talked about that it's going to end up in the clip compilation eventually, I'm sure. We're doing clip yeah, compilations thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. It's always fun to have fun. you on. And we can definitely do like a Unity thing next time. Unity pair programming. <laughs> That'll be a disaster. Or we could do something else, like a much handier tool. But uh, yeah. it's just you maybe, know, the most Maybe that time we thing. don't we don't name each of the individual clock ticks. You don't want me to name individual clock assets after other streamers? You spent like 20 minutes on that. <laughs> you got upset that I spent 20 minutes naming And then you clock didn't finish assets. the tutorial. <laughs> I didn't finish the tutorial at all. I have to go back to the tutorial. We're going to be like, okay. I'll, I'll redo up to the point that we stopped at with proper naming conventions. Uh, if To anybody learning how to program, please do not name your children after streamers. And when I say children, I mean children objects. Not that <laughs> children are objects, but like children as in programming <laughs> objects. Keep in. Yes, uh, can, can someone take the shovel from all me right. before I, I dig myself a hole? All right, all right. Uh, we are going to go hang out with Chaos Hand. Very fantastic variety streamer. And uh, <clears throat> I already put up the raid chant. Take care. Uh, do not feel obligated to stick around if you've got things going on, but we are going to go hang out with Justin. Name your kids after streamers, everyone. Thank you, Sean. In three, two, one. Bye-bye. <laughs>